I'm Luke Searville. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today we're going to talk about Pi. Why Pi? Why not? Hey, as a freelancer, some days you find yourself, uh, you're not on the job. Uh, you've um, you caught up on all your maintenance and you've done your paperwork. So uh, I call it self-unemployed. And it's good to uh, fill your time with something so you don't buy more gear. And uh, why not something constructive like making Pi? All right, let's start at the beginning. So, uh, first of all, a good friend of mine, Carol Hooksma, gave me this uh, book. Kind of title says it, says it all, Pi. It's written by Ken Hadrick, H-A-E-D-R-I-C-H. It's great. It's got 300 recipes. I've maybe made 50 of them. And uh, I make a pie or two uh, a week. And so, over the last three years, well, you figure it out. Anyway, uh, does that make me an expert? No. Professional? No. I'm a grip. So, you know, uh, grip, electrics, it's, it's all temporary. Temporary power, temporary rigs, and uh, it doesn't last. So, um, that's like pie. You know, you make pie, people eat it. Boom. First off, I take um, some water and some butter and put it in the freezer. So, we'll get three quarters of a cup of water. Put that in the freezer. And then two sticks of uh, unsalted butter. And you put those in the freezer. And you just let those, you know, get nice and, and cold while you get the uh, flour ready. So, uh, what I've kind of come down to the last uh, little bit is uh, two cups of white flour and a half cup of uh, almond meal, a little bit of salt, and then that butter and water. So, Put that in there. One, two. There comes the loud refrigerator. And then half. Half cup of almond meal. Now, in some ways, this isn't such a great idea if you've got friends that are allergic to tree nuts. The other thing is keep your hands clean all the time. So, just mix that together a little bit and throw some salt in there. I use sea salt. You know, big pinch, quarter teaspoon, something like that. And just mix it. Now you could put your uh, water and butter in a lot sooner, get it even colder, probably better. Uh, it's just good to work with uh, uh, with all your elements being a little bit cold, so. They, um, they hold together and um, well, there's a better reason for that, but I, I forget what it is right now. Anyway, we'll put this away. Cut the butter up into, I don't know, um, quarter inch sections. Yeah, this could be colder. I can feel it kind of melting on my fingers. Just a little, it's not a bad. It'll chop better if it's colder. And by chopping, I mean using this tool over here. So just holding it in my hands probably heats it up and melts it a little bit. But anyway, it's pretty good. It's not like, you know, sticking to my fingers too much. All right, and then save out one of these. You can use that to uh, butter your pie dish later. And you get this device, um, you know, it's a pastry cutter of some sort, um, but they're not all created equal. This one is nice because it, it doesn't roll on you. It's, it's, it's well made. I got it at one of those uh, pie farms uh, near Monterey. And um, 
uh, I've, I've gone through a couple of these because I push down kind of hard, I guess. And so um, I like this. And you could put it in a food processor, but uh, I like this sort of manual version. And, um, and that way I think um, all the ingredients stay a little um, aerated too. You know, um, they're not too processed. They're not too mixed together. And you don't want to mix stuff too much because then supposedly you don't get as uh, flaky a crust. So uh, you just want to work it a little bit so that they're sort of pea-sized uh, chunks of butter. And, um, you know, it's all real butter. Real ingredients are, are better than anything that's more processed. So, two sticks of butter in there. And then you get your water. Then I just make a little well. Put a little water in, mix that in a little bit. You just want to get all that dry flour to moisten up so that it'll stick together better. So yeah, you don't want to overdo the, uh, the mixing part of it, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you're doing it by hand, I think you're pretty safe. Besides, you got to get it so that it's, it'll all stick together. So you got to mess with it a little bit. It's not going to do it by itself. All right, so that's just three quarters of a cup of water. And um, now it's all kind of glumpy, you know. So that's just about right. We'll get this stuff off of here. And this is good for two crusts. So two, you know, a top and a bottom, or two bottoms, and then you can, you know, put uh, a crumble top on top. Uh, now I'm going to put a little um, flour on my hands so that I can work with it. And then we're going to put it into, um, we're going to wrap it in uh, uh, wrap, so plastic wrap, so we can put it in the, in the fridge for an hour. Let's get out the plastic. All right. So just, yeah, you know, one by one kind of a square. And then I just put it on the counter. I'm going to use the side that doesn't touch the counter. So if you're worried about the hygiene, I wouldn't worry about it too much. There you go. Hey, if you don't want to eat the pie, there's more for me. All right, so here we go. We put a little flour on our hands, and you get right in there. And you just want to work it so that you get all the moist parts to hook up with all the dry parts so that they all get a kind of even consistency of being just moist enough to hold together, but not so moist that they stick to your fingers. So, you know, there's a lot that sticks to your fingers. That's why you want to keep your hands clean and your counters clean and all your services clean because you're working with food that people are going to eat. You don't want to make them sick. It's coming together. You want to get all that last little bit of flour that sort of falls to the bottom. You got any wet or sticky parts and you just aim those at the uh, leftover flour so it all sticks together and you make a big old clump and then you want to separate it into two equal clumps so I'm very exacting about this not and that just feels like it's two two sections that are basically the same and then you bring this up Put that in there, one, two, three, and four, and then press down so it fills the plastic. Okay, one more, get the last little bits of flour. It's 
pretty good. You sort of make a, a fat hockey puck, put it on there, and squeeze it to fill. And then this will go in the fridge for an hour, and then we'll come back and we'll roll out uh, the bottom crust and go from there. But uh, while this is sitting in the fridge for an hour, it's time to go shopping for some fruit. So the, the trick is, if you're making a pie like I am today, then you want to have fruit that's ripe enough to make it into a pie. If you get hard fruit, then you've got to let it sit for a while so it'll soften up. Uh, else you've got a, a hard tasting pie and that's not so great. So yeah, you can, you can make it taste better than it would uh, if you just ate it out of your hand, but um, it's still, even though it's going through juicing, you know, with sugar and, and going into oven, uh, you want to have ripe fruit uh, ready to go for your pie. It's going to be that much better. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm back from shopping and I uh, got fruit for uh, two pies. Uh, I've got some cherries, some Rainier cherries, and some regular Bing cherries. And uh, so they'll. Um, That'll make a nice pie, but I'll probably make that uh, either tomorrow or the next day. And then I got some um, midnight velvet apricots and some honey cut uh, or honey cot uh, apricots. And uh, so we'll make that uh, today. Uh, the nice thing about this kind of stone fruit is that you don't have to peel it. And so like apricots and, and uh, pluots and apriums, uh, they're great because you just clean them. Uh, cut them in, in, in slices, uh, take out that easy pit, and, and away you go. Whereas, you know, cherries, it's a little, little more work to get the, the, um, get the pit out. And, um, uh, and other things like peaches and even apples, you know, you, you want to you peel them. So it takes a little more time. Uh, these are a pretty quick fruit for pie making. So uh, before we get to this, we're going to roll out the dough uh, and make the bottom crust. I uh, picked up one of the, uh, you know, the hockey pucks uh, from the fridge and um, we'll leave the other one for later. I've got this, uh, you know, uh, roll, roll pat, some French, uh, you know, uh, they come in different types. Uh, you can get um, ones that are oven ready you know, to put cookies on and it's uh, just a nice uh, smooth um, surface. But for me, it helps uh, take the cracks out of the uh, peninsula here for uh, rolling out. So um, take a little bit of flour, just roll that down, roll that down, shake it down. And um, take this guy out. Now, it's a little moist but it's nice and cool uh, and then here's a rolling pin sock seems to work well and you can clean this and, and stuff doesn't stick to your rolling pin I don't know just got used to it it's another gift from Carol Hooksma and then just roll it out and you can kind of see how your butter is in sort of globs throughout. And that's good. That's a good thing. That'll make it nice and flaky. So yeah, you just roll it out to about 12 inch circle. So first we'll take a chunk of butter here. And you got that paper you left over from the butter before, and just fill your bottom and sides, and I, I just use the regular, um, I guess they're nine and a half inch pie pans. I like the Pyrex. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the, the metal tins. Uh, I don't know, the Pyrex just seems to work real well for pies, so. I dig it. You don't want to stretch this too much, but it's not a huge deal. And I just bring it over like a quarter inch or an inch over the, the end and then 
I slice this off. Snip it off, I guess, would be better. And then... There we go. And then take a fork. And so what I do is I just go around in a circle and then come into the center slowly and then do uh, turn it 90 degrees and then come around and spiral into the center. That's sort of an easy way of forking it. And I don't even know why you do that, but um, there's a reason. <laughs> oh boy. This is the pan that's going to go underneath the pie when it's in the oven. And uh, I take the extra crust and I make uh, sugar crusts uh, for my wife because she's not really a, a, a fan of pies. Uh, it's wasted calories because it's fruit, not chocolate. And so uh, I make these crusts because she loves the crust. So there you go. That's how we work it out. And that just means there's more pie for others. Okay, then we take this and we'll put this uh, back in the pie fridge. I have a, one of those little uh, college fridges in the garage. That's the pie fridge. We'll put this in there while we make the fruit. And then once we're a little ways uh, into making the fruit, we'll get the oven going and uh, heat that up and away we go. All right, let's uh, get to the fruit. So um, you wanna wash it first. What's cool about apricots is they, they just slice open so nicely. Sometimes they're too soft or they're just too hard, but uh, these feel just right. Recipes will call for four to five cups of fruit. You know, you could have up to eight cups of fruit and yeah, it'd be a bit of a mound, but uh, you'd be just fine. I would not skimp on your fruit. And does that mean you have to change the ingredients of everything else? No, not really. We'll put this in a bowl with some sugar. That'll juice up real nicely. I'm just making this stuff up. I don't really know what's gonna happen. It seems like that's how it tastes, so that's what I'm going with. I think the important part of all this is that you taste the fruit. You know, you don't want to taste some kind of goo. You know, so why put this in a puree or whatever? You know, there's jam for that. This is a fruit pie. You know, I want to taste the fruit. Plus you're going through all that work just to make something taste like you'd get it at the store. It's like, I don't want that. I want something that tastes like it was made with love and care. So the fruit has been sitting here for about a half an hour and uh, really juicing up. You can tell because uh, the, uh, the, the juice is growing um, uh, in liquid form uh, around the fruit and that, that's just gonna be wonderful. And we wanna make a little uh, uh, extra solution here to hold things together a bit better. So we'll take uh, two tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of cornstarch. When I open cornstarch for the first time, I like to just keep half of it there. So then you've got a, uh, a perfect thing to give you a, a flat top. So you know that you've got the right amount. And then um, Sometimes I, instead of putting the nutmeg in with the fruit, I put it in with this, but this time I put it directly into the fruit. So. Mix this up. And we'll add this to the pile. And this will just help to Hold everything together. It'll still be fairly loose, but that's okay. I don't need it to all be 
perfectly held together. So now I'll get going on the top crust. And then we try to time the finishing of the top crust with the, the oven being at proper temperature. And the oven, I put it at uh, 375 because we have a uh, electric oven, but it's so it's a it's a, it's a dual fuel uh, range. The top is gas, bottom is electric, and um, since it's a Wolf, it's got um, real convection. It's got two fans in it, so it can change the direction of of the heat, and um, so. Normally, you'd put the oven at 400 degrees to start, but uh, I put it at 375 because the convection so it'll, runs it a little hotter. And um, uh, so we'll, we'll put it in at 375 for uh, 25 minutes and then turn it 180, probably put a, um, a ring around the, the, the crust, a uh, little, little shield. Um, and then maybe even on the top, depending on, on how that's doing. Um, but uh, then we'll put it in for another 25 minutes at 350, which would be 375 in a regular oven. So, all right. So now we got the fan going because the, the heat of the oven is, you know, uh, well, it's a warm day outside. We'll just keep everything moving in here. Okay. So now we got the second chunk of dough and I'm gonna roll this out and let's see, shall we make what kind of crust? Ah, we're just gonna do a regular flat top crust. We could do a lattice, but uh, today we're not going to. Probably make that with the cherry pie. I don't really have this figured out yet either. I wish I could give you some better tips on how to roll this stuff out, but all I know is that this particular crust recipe rolls out better than what I used to have. So that be as it may, that works out pretty well. Okay, so now we've got this going. Uh, we need a bottom crust. Okay, so Mr. Bottom Crust. It's uh, nice and firm because it's been in the fridge for a while. And then we've got, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and not uh, siphon off the juice. I'm just going to leave it all in there, make it nice and uh, sweet. It'll be a little bit runny, but that's okay. Some of that will thicken up, and some of it will thicken up after it's in the fridge for a while. So tonight this is actually going... Uh, for a, a silent auction fundraiser for a service trip to Yosemite. And so, um, yeah, it'll probably be in the fridge at least overnight uh, before it uh, is eaten. So that's good. So see, it, it, it fills it, but you could have even more uh, piled up here. Like, especially in an apple pie, you just want to, uh, you know, put a nice mound on it. This is, this is fine, and this is actually good for a, a lattice crust because you don't want a lattice crust to be too high up, I don't think. Uh, but for this kind of um, um, top, uh, this will work fine, but you could even be uh, taller if you wanted to be. So, um, yeah, let's just pop that on there, and then we'll just trim it. And then we'll fold it underneath. And I guess you could take water to uh, moisten the edges and then it would seal better maybe. Uh, I don't really do that. I've done it a few times, but generally I don't bother. Um, so then here I just kind of go underneath. And take milk, you could do egg white, you could do egg, just a straight egg, you know, make it yellow. Uh, then it gets a nice uh, sheen, you know, uh, um, you know, a, a browner 
um, sheen. But um, so just do a little tuck like that. And then you can cut whatever you want into uh, the face of it. And since this is for a Yosemite trip, uh, I think I'm gonna put a yo in there. So uh, we'll just go ahead and yo it up. And then it's nice to have something cut into the surface so that you can see the bubbling of the juice, of uh, the fruit juice. And that's really your clue that your, uh, that your pie is, is, is finished. So it's decorative, but it's also functional. All right, see, I'm not an artist, but it's kind of a, an odd looking O. But there you go. So, yo. All right. Uh, now, we got a little more crust. One for me, one for the missus. She likes hers underdone, so I leave mine in a little bit longer sometimes. Two of these. And then, uh, you know, you don't want it to be too pooly. But just get it m moist and ready to accept some turbinado sugar. So that's sugar with just a little uh, coarser grain to it, and that tastes good on a on the top of your pie. All right, now we'll put it on these. Crusties. I guess we should have a better name for these. Sugar crusts. I don't know. You decide. Okay. Turbinado. Fair trade, no doubt. No less. Okay, so here we go. Don't be shy. Okay. Nice. And then, um, you know, for the, the first, the first half of this in the oven will be 25 minutes. This is like 15 minutes. So you can set your timer for 15, pull this out, add another 10. But uh, I just kind of keep an eye on it. So, um, but we've got another 10 degrees waiting for that. So I, uh, I'm a little off on my timing, but that's not bad. And uh, we can clean up. Uh, oven just dinged. And so we're ready. So we'll put this uh, on the bottom and then we'll put that uh, in the middle rack. Set the timer. This time we'll do it for 15. And we'll let it go. Okay. We'll clean up a little bit and we'll see you in a bit. Let's see how these little crusts are doing. One's a little toasty. One's a little less so. Hot 
pie is doing pretty well, but still has a little way to go. So there you go. So that'll be for me. That'll be for Jan. Probably could have taken them out a little sooner, but uh, there you go. Sugar crusts. Let those cool. All right. Halfway point. So, it's looking good, but we are definitely going to cover this part of it, and we'll let the rest of it go for a bit. Turn that off, turn that back on, bring it up to 350, or down, as the case may be, and uh, we'll put that in the opposite way. And then we'll probably put the, uh, we'll cover the, the middle of it uh, for the last 10 minutes or so. Okay, let's check it. So this is actually uh, 15 minutes, so like 10 minutes shy or five minutes shy of what I normally do. But looks like it's juicing up pretty well. Uh, yeah, it's bubbling. It's bubbling up nicely. Never did get the center one on there but I think we're in pretty good shape. So, yo, that's good. All right, well, there you have it. Woo, that's still hot. Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, nice and browned. Um, the um, fruit juice was bubbling up well, and uh, now we just let it sit until it cools. And then I'll put it uh, in the fridge until we uh, take it away tonight. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you again next time. Cheers.